Thank you. I, I, yeah, I'm trying to control it. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilona Pushkesh, and I'm here to represent a working group that is composed of uh, EIT Climate Kicks Community Activation Team, Mozilla Foundation, and the Climate Action. And the apropos for me to give this kind of opening provocation to this group is that we are currently working on a publication which is uh, on the very topic of a sustainable internet for all. Um, and I believe that this is very relevant to each and every workshop and in general, the guiding topic of um, networked imaginaries. So it was very delightful to hear and start in, to interact with this group of people who, with whom I feel an immense kinship to. And I, I think that it's, it's, the urgency is there and, and it's becoming um, more and more pressing and inevitable to address um, practices um, which are not aligned with the core values of sustainability. And that was our starting point for this publication, which tries to capture the poetic and political aspect of, of uh, internet, both on an, an abstract level and, and in, in praxis. Um, so to begin with, uh, I would like to put our activities on your radar, if I may. Uh, us, the EIT Climate Kick is one of the first generation kicks uh, that are funded by EIT, so essentially an EU body. And this is the largest uh, public-private partnership in Europe for certain targeting sustainability and, and uh, addressing climate change. And the main uh, tools and, and the, the former theory of change was to do it through innovation. What is more through a very uh, conventional funnel model of innovation, which um, was really um, resonating with the ethos of, of the rise of the startups um, 10 years ago when, when uh, it was established. Uh, but three years ago, we have um, adopted a new strategy, which, was, which is focusing on systemic change as opposed to uh, just this push model of, of new solutions. We also realizing that um, technologies are vastly there uh, to, to bring about a desirable change and, and alter the destructive um, tendencies. But adoption and, and not, not necessarily, that's, that's something that I would like to really emphasize that uh, it's not about awareness raising where, where most of the funding would be uh, concentrated to but it's rather the, the following steps where, where it's, it's becoming part of the policies and uh, industry change where, where it's key to, to bring about deep transformation. And our, our team specifically is on the, on the working on the edges and the fringes of, of the organization's scope and portfolio. Uh, so we really seek out unusual actors and uh, unlikely alliances uh, to foster this um, systemic change uh, through arts, culture, technology, but in, in a kind of reformed understanding um, and not, not business-driven technologies um, and activism uh, and, and any... any Kind of constellations that that um, haven't been priorly uh, discovered 
as, as for their community building uh, potential. Um, so I, due to my background in uh, sustainable curating, uh, my presentation will bring you two examples of projects that will be covered in our upcoming magazine. And one, one just fire starter, so to speak, uh, to, to nest it in. Just one second. Yes. So I, I'm, this, this just shows that my references can be considered somewhat ancient or older to, to this generation, but I, I, I would like to believe that it's refreshing to kind of uh, be inspired by these examples. So this in particular is the previous one on my starting slide is the Pyramid Niger. And this is the Kubus Niger with, by the German artist Michael Sau. And it, it really cap captured the zeitgeist of, of uh, 2009-10 when the, the movie Avatar came out. And uh, I am really fascinated by how many layers are build, built into this simple um, format uh, of, of these are, of course, the furious one is uh, photo manipulation. And, and there's an actual tangible installation, which was part of a traveling exhibition. And so to begin with, Avatar is, is um, alluding to the Sanskrit for descent. And the form of the pyramid is, is uh, essentially designed to stand for the descending rays of the sun. So it can be, it's, it's really a mnemonic in itself. And also the, the materials that were used here are uh, lignite blocks. So coal as in tar. <laughs> and also the movie, if you recall, was um, had a intendedly strong messaging around uh, ecological sustainability and safeguarding the pristine nature and ecosystems and planets and controversially uh, merely this this what we can see in the photo now this is um, the coal used to generate enough electricity only for the first million views of the trailer of Altar. <laughs> So I, I think that it's 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 really speaks volumes that that um, uh, we have to make similar efforts um, to show what uh, something that is seemingly immaterial um, actually means and and what what is the toll that it takes uh, on the environment and and uh, natural resources non renewables. Um, for the most part, so the the pyramid itself is uh, is um, thousand four hundred twenty two uh, um, meters wide and nine hundred and five meters tall, and this is the electrical power consumption of the internet in two thousand and nine. And to take into consideration that since then it, it has exponentially grown, uh, it was already uh, one, and a, one and a half times of the Earth's sun, sun distance if you were to put the blocks uh, on top of each other. So it's, it's really mind boggling to think of the, these dimensions. And, and we need these kind of punches, I believe, and, and kind of wake up calls. And I think that it's very disturbing to see that we've ever since the silent spring came out, and this is also a very dated reference, and, and there's still much to be done uh, for sustainability to be the standard. 
and 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 for us to not into these traps of the ecological folklore because whatever seems green is not always the best choice uh, and we see that with how much focus was put on say not not printing an email to have this in this <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm obviously coming from a previous generation and and that was kind of a trend to have this in your signature and on, on a corporate level even but to see that that it's kind of a comic um effort to 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 try to do away with this this um this couple pages of paper whereas uh what is in the cloud or or internet in general websites are are probably more harmful than uh, two two pages of paper being printed um so an, a main starting point uh, uh, alongside which we started developing this publication which explores the various uh, aspects and approaches that are applicable uh, for a more sustainable internet was this manifesto which um, is essentially uh, capturing all the angles that we have to be mindful of when and what we mean basically unpacking what we mean by the sustainable internet so it has to be powered by renewable energy and the minimum amount of energy that that makes it possible for for it to exist and also climate justice uh, and and social justice in general has to be baked into all products and services uh, as opposed to just being an extra layer or somewhat of a decor decoration on top of of uh, um, yeah projects that are, are driven by by other principles yeah so it it has it it will it uh, has to be straightforward and open and non-exploitative and and also uh be cognizant of the bigger picture and and the kind of um economic dynamics that it's embedded in and therefore yeah also further uh, other crucial agendas be it uh be it gender equality or uh empowerment on a wider scale so this our exploration has led to also being influenced by uh, our background and sensitivities uh, to this simple thesis is as like just to to rhyme with uh, the small is beautiful uh, notion that frugal is beautiful and we have to merge and weave together ethical and aesthetic considerations and make uh, frugal more palatable in a sense that so as it's it's becoming the preferred uh choice uh based on 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 the aesthetic criteria that are there so it's not it doesn't feel like a compromise and it doesn't feel like a sacrifice to uh, designers when they go for something that is more sustainable so it's not a downgrade <laughs> it doesn't feel like a downgrade uh but rather yeah it it we want to strip it strip away all the connotations which feel like uh a sustainable website would be more um would be less uh beautiful and would be a more um uh, kind of ha ha limited in terms of the the elements that that uh, are available so yeah we we are really inspired and and we incorporate degrowth and 
uh, ecofeminism as as uh, our core principles, and and we we really are keeping keeping uh, our hands on the pulse of of what is happening in academia uh, to to remain uh, very up to date and cut the like, bleeding edge on on. Uh, how we approach this and, and stay relevant for, for the communities that we really care about. So the, this is a uh, uh, visual that I'm borrowing from Ellery Studios. And to me, I'm, I'm kind of, I would argue that this is not a spectrum systemic and aesthetic are essentially part of the, the same circle and and I would I would rather go for a more cyclical representation but this is a good way to to just begin mapping how contributions can uh, reinforce each other uh, and how, how we can um, coordinate action uh, so as these are not just uh, isolated cases of, of uh, good examples, but it's, it's a unified uh, movement that we build uh, towards pressuring to, to bring about a more, a more sustainable internet. So the first example, which will be featured in our publication, which is first going to be distributed online, and then we plan to, to make a, a paper-based version to it. And it, this is a project by uh, one of our main partners in this undertaking, Michelle Thorne from the Mozilla Foundation. And, and this is a miniature museum of the fossilized internet and i would like to quote some of um, their concept notes so this museum was founded in 2050 to commemorate two decades of fossil free internet so it's essentially imagining a future and and offering a retrospective uh view on on how we got there so it's it, yeah museum visitors can experience coal and oil powered internet of 2020 it's yeah it's a very recent project gasp at the horrors of surveillance capitalism not knowingly at the plague of spam be baffled at the size of AI training data and lament the binge culture of video streaming. While curation always means making a choice, we visualized and incorporated as many of the everyday practices as we could based on the input feedback and observations shared with us by, the, by our contemporaries. You are free to roam this miniature museum as you please. Descriptions and ad additional research put each exhibit into context and perspective. If you're a 2020 contemporary, please leave comments and observations when you leave. Enjoy, ponder, act. So this is seemingly uh, small, but it's, it's um, every, every single uh, detail uh, is encapsulating a lot of information and evoking a lot of uh, uh, facts that have to do with the uh, fossil fueled internet. So, for instance, the there's a small, in a ways you can see a mouse, and it's it's called this piece is called Generation Scroll, and and it it reflects on how. Uh, the generation between 2005 and 2010 was called uh, Generation Hyperlink. And, and it, it really confronts us with uh, how much uh, web, the, the weight of websites have grown and how, how much 
it actually takes to 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 be able to scroll these um, websites on a daily basis. So for those living in Europe in 2019, the average user would scroll the equivalent of 180 meters each day, half the height of Berlin's TV tower. And it also envisions a collapse um, since the 2000, uh, 2024 collapse of the online ad industry, websites have entered into generation just enough, prioritizing only necessary content delivered in the most sustainable way, respecting users' choices and limiting the number of daily adverts served. And another kind of exotic example. Yes, maybe. Yeah. So the the relentless um, the ver work titled Relentless, which you may be aware of that it is the original name that was bought for for Amazon, and it was it was their first first choice, and yeah, and it's it's really reflecting on the legacy code that. Uh, Amazon purchases and navigation through the site uh, result in. Yeah. Yeah, we have a little piece in the center around spam. Also uh, kind of playing to the retro sketch of uh, Monty Python and and also it's it's packed with with facts around the the social the phantom social media accounts and uh, yeah that and, and and all the all the carbon emissions that are associated um, with the spam email traffic, for instance. Uh, yeah, this there's there's a piece that is specifically uh, speaking to the the Second Life avatars, and yeah, it's just it's just uh, insane. I, I I wouldn't venture into further uh, sharing all the numbers that I have here but i would i would share the link with you to to further further explore but just another uh, co comparison is that the song despacito just to tie it back to the avatar trailer that had five billion views on youtube uh took eight hundred and fifty thousand barrels of oil or 93 wind turbines running for an entire year. So it's really the scale is, is quite scary and, and the time is now to act. And in order to be able to transition into action, uh, we, have to, we have to really start with radical imagination. So the so we sh we should really um, take a critical stance, and instead of uh, kind of dwelling on on the fact that networks are such polluters in a sense, not like of course respect to the uh, exceptions. Uh, we should we should celebrate them and realize that they are an essential part of uh, connectivity, and uh, and are are actually very fruitful and and beneficial for the well being of of people and even the planet, and they are essentially modeled like they they have a lot to do. It's there's a growing tendency of working with biomimicry experts and for a good reason, uh, because our 
the networks that we create are major, majorly inspired by, by the networks that ex exist in nature. And, and that's what we've seen from the introductions and, and um, it, all, it all comes back to these, these organic systems. Um, so in terms of imagination, uh, something that, that we felt like is, is a similar undertaking to the Hackers and Designers Summer Academy was this uh, solar punk festival, which is happening on an annual basis in Berlin to exactly unpack and, and uh, on, unlearn many of the things that make, make, make us rigid and set in our ways to, um, yeah, to, to think about, uh, starting anything from scratch and and this is this is a an exercise that should not be underestimated uh, because uh, we are limited in our imagination more than we would like to think even people who who have the approval of creative industries and and are are creatives by trade by profession and by calling so um, I, I really uh, would like to say kudos to the hackers and designers organizing team for, for continuing this um, great progress uh, to, to bring this together year after year, uh, because we, we are desperately need this kind of framework uh, to be able to then amplify it and, and, and scale it up, but by means of mainly uh, application to different contexts instead of scaling in the sense of, of just almost doing um, a growth hacking stunt. So, so we are really interested in, in such uh, small grassroots and, and very experimental and experiential um, projects and, and ideas that, that really let uh, our, our modus operandi and, and business as usual unravel. So I would like to uh, invite you to contribute to our publication and in general feel free to reach out to me with any bold wild crazy ideas that you may have because our mission and our mandate is really as, as co the community activation team um, at climate kick is to really support these kind of ideas and and put them uh, on the map by 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 combining that them with um, very valuable uh, scientific uh, backing and and uh, really providing access to to many other networks in the in the older sense and 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 just putting them in a position where where uh, where they can really make a difference so so we are super open to 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 listen and to learn from you and yeah and help you uh, help you help us and <laughs> make systemic change um, together so that would be it, and I will I will be sure to circulate all the relevant links because I understand that it's um, hard to consume all the numbers based on spoken word. So thank you for your attention, and I wish you a great week hacking and designing. Thank you.
Thank you.